Sorry, lady. This is closing time. Oh, just a few minutes longer. That's my orders. I can't let anyone stay after 6 o'clock. Oh. There are some more people coming now. Oh, that's different. That's Mrs. Endicott. Her family owned all this land before the company did. She's got special privileges. Oh. Well, what are you hanging back for? I don't want to see dead people. What did I ever do that heaven should give me an idiot for a son? You're going to put those flowers on your father's tomb if I have to drag you there. Don't you see he's frightened? Roberts, I will not be disobeyed. Come. Put those flowers there. Will they hurt me, Robbie? No. Oh, you cuddle him too much. I've been more of a mother to him than you have. Philip, nature treated you unkindly, but your family were splendid men and women. Can't you make an effort? A great effort to get some of their strength. Oh, I am strong. Look. <laughs> that kind of strength is no good. He does his best. It's not his fault. It's mine, I suppose. Yes. You're a mean, selfish old woman. You're like all the Endicotts. Not one of them has ever cared for anyone else. And Philip is the result. You are not here to put flowers on a grave. I know what you are here for. This. Let's go home now. 
Good night, Mrs. Endicott. Good night, Amos. Can I help you across, Mrs. Endicott? No, thank you, Cassidy. Do I look as old as all that? No matter how old you are, you don't look it. Hmm. Hey, you. You're the new girl around here, aren't you? What became of that redhead? Do you keep track of them all? I wouldn't mind keeping track of you. And it wouldn't be hard to do. Here I go. Let me go. I have to answer the door. You were long enough about answering. Did anybody call while I was out? Your nephew telephoned. Oh, he did. I should never have had a telephone. What are they good for? You only hear from a lot of people you don't like. Did my nephew say what he wants? Perhaps his conscience hurts him and he's coming to visit you. <laughs> conscience, indeed. Where did he get a conscience? He's after my money. That's what you said, Robbie. But he'll never get it, will he? Is his wife coming? He didn't say, ma'am. She better not. She's a malicious, designing creature. Ought to be hung for a witch. If she comes here, slam the door in her face. Put the chain on the door. Yes, ma'am. But, Laura, darling, I can't help it if we haven't got more money. Don't, darling, me and do as I tell you. Be nice to your old aunt. Remind her you're an Endicott. Certainly impress it on me often enough. But, Laura, you know how I hate to ask for things. You didn't hate to ask for me. But don't think that I'm going to sit around day after day looking in mirrors and watching my youth disappear. If you need courage, why don't you take a drink? Well, I do believe that... That on an occasion like this. Ah. Uh... You could kill somebody with it. Put that down. He's got one. That's the sword, and he used it in a fair fight. He was a brave, honest man. It's wrong to evoke the dead. Let them stay dead. If I want to live in the past, I will. Goodness knows, the present holds little enough for me. <laughs> Put the knife down, Philip. Philip, if I were taken away, and Roberts too, what would you do? Kill. Sure. You want to be a soldier? No. No guns, knives, <laughs> or with my hands. And you're to inherit the Endicott money and power. What a thing to leave behind me. Oh. What are you waiting for? Won't you come in with me? No, she hates the sight of me. But, Laura, I... Oh, stop arguing and go on in. No, you'll spoil my makeup. Don't kiss me, you hypocrite. Why, Aunt Julia, 
I suppose you think I should rise to the occasion and make it a family reunion. Yes, that's a fine idea, Aunt Julie. A meeting of the Endicott clan, eh? Philip, Philip, come and shake hands with your cousin Herbert. How are you, Philip? Sit down. Bring him a drink. Brandy. Never mind the soda and bring him a big glass. Well, I have got a cold. Not even a good liar. Well, what did you come for? I wanted to see how you are. I'm still an undercut. You used to be. You were a nice boy when you lived here, before you married that woman. She put it in your head to come, I know. You want my money. Oh, no, Aunt Julia. You know I've always been fond of you. Just as I was saying to Laura the other day. Philip! Yes, Robbie? Come here to me. I don't like you. But I'm going to do what your wife wants. What's that, Aunt Julia? The Endicott fortune must go to an Endicott. So my heir will be either a drunkard or a beast. A bitter choice. Everything considered, I choose the drunkard. Telephone my attorney to come here at once. Your attorney? You heard what I said or you couldn't defeat it. My attorney, my attorney, my attorney. Is that clear? I want him here at once. Will you obey me? Tom, I shouldn't keep coming to your apartment like this. Laura, why not make the break and come to me for good? Don't ask me to leave Herbert altogether. He has such a hard time, poor fellow. And it's my duty to console him. Yes, but you deserve better things from life. You shouldn't have to worry about money and... Tom, please don't ask me to accept money from you again. You do need money. I knew it. Tom, please. Good evening, Mrs. Endicott. Good evening, Jerry. Tom, you do so much for me, and I do so little for you. Why, that's not true. Oh, look, Laura. I finished it. Tom, how wonderful. <laughs> oh. I shouldn't have done that. Yes, you should, Laura. Oh, stop wasting your life on a man who can do nothing for you. Come with me. Not yet, Tom. We must be patient. This has been drawn up very hastily, Mrs. Endicott. Let me see it. Leave all of which I die possess to my nephew Herbert. That's right. Trust fund for Philip. That's right. Miss Roberts to live here and take care of him. Right. And my nephew and his wife to make this house their home. Well, now, I'll have to ask Laura if she wants to. What do you think I'm doing it for is not to keep up the family tradition. No house, no money. Well, decide. All right, all right, we live here. Then it's all settled. I have signed. You are disinheriting your own son. Think it over first. No, the Endicott's die like that. And anyway, I might change my mind again. I'll sign now. Your sin shall be on your own head. There's no satisfying you. I tell you I'm to get everything when she dies. When she dies? Well, that can't be long. Long enough for us to be too old to enjoy it. Oh, we can struggle along in the meantime. 
I'll borrow some money from Tom Holland. Why, you don't think I could be happy living on any man's money but yours, dear. Well, what can I do, darling? Nothing. <laughs> I never had any luck. You would be her heir if she died tonight. If she died tonight? What are you thinking of? Nothing. Just thinking. The House of Indica. All great men and women through every generation. And who are the Indica to come after me? A drunkard and a beast. Hmm. The House of Indica. Do you know where Philip was when you heard that scream? No, but I'm sure Philip had nothing to do with it. Seems to me the whole thing's clear enough. Finger marks on her throat. Shows that the deceased died by strangling. Inflicted by persons unknown. Why not include the whole thing in your report? We know who did it. Her son. No, no. It can't be. I've spent my whole life raising Philip, and he wouldn't do anything like that. Now, now, Miss Roberts. We know how attached you are to him. But he thought he was going to inherit the money, and found out he wasn't. And in a fit of insane rage, he killed her. Why, it's just as simple as day and night. Bring him in. Please, sir, don't frighten him. He's so excitable. You're only making his case worse. That's all. That's all there is to it. Pardon me, Chief. You're arresting only one suspect. What other suspect is there? A person who might have had a motive and who benefited by the will. Herbert Endicott. How dare you say that? No offense, Mrs. Endicott. But it's quite possible that your husband might have done it. That'll do, Velcro. We've got an open and shut case. Don't forget who Mr. and Mrs. Endicott are now. It don't make any difference what position they've inherited or how much money. My contention is that we haven't got at the bottom of this case. And it's our duty to do just that. But, Lieutenant, there are times when duty should give way to common sense. I can't agree with you, Mrs. Endicott. Chief! We can't find Philip. Why, there he is. Well, when did he come in? Wait a minute. How do you spend your time all day, Philip? I think. Think, eh? Well, now that's very encouraging. 
What do you think about, huh? About killing? Yes, killing. That's all very well, but I've been told that it's awfully hard to kill people. How do you go about it? Oh, I could do it all right. Maybe with a knife. Oh. Or just my hand. Yes, yeah. look. Jump him, boy. Well, Valcour, are you satisfied? No, sir. Kind of obstinate, aren't you? Take him to the station house. Poor boy. He didn't do it. You were committing a sin, bringing down judgment on us all. I'll take a chance on that. If you agree, coroner, we'll call the case closed. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, you're dismissed. No offense, Chief, but there are just two things I'd like to ask you about. Well, she was strangled, wasn't she? Well, you saw the finger marks on her throat. Philip was strong enough to break that andiron, wasn't he? What's that got to do with it? Just this. If he's as strong as all that, why isn't her neck broken? I'm not interested in jigsaw puzzles. The case is closed. I'm afraid Lieutenant Valcour hasn't much respect for your judgment, Chief. In this case, no. Why, I beg your pardon, Chief. Mr. Endicott. I'd like to apologize for this unfortunate occurrence. Oh, that's all right. Of course, I think whoever makes such an accusation should be made an example of. But I hope you won't punish the lieutenant too severely. I'll think it over. Thank you. I think I'd better cross-examine you. Why? You might be one of those master minds. One of them notorious female criminals that make men their tools. Where were you when the murder was committed? And if it comes to that, where were you? Barking me bait. I'm a policeman. How long have you been a policeman? About three years. How much do you make? Well, only a regular cop salary, but I'll be promoted pretty soon. Then I won't be such a bad catch. Are you married? Well, not that I know of. Have you any bad habits? Do you drink or smoke? I thought you said bad habits. All right. I guess you'll do. Eternal rest grant unto her, and let light shine upon her forever. Amen. Amen. Wait. feared that she might be buried alive. That is to be her signal. She told me to make sure. It's horrible. Can't you stop it?
Her earthly journey is done. She has gone to her just reward. Now she is at rest. Poor Aunt Julia. You must try to bear up, Mrs. Endicott. I'll try. take this room. My husband can have the one next to it. The balcony outside the windows connects these two rooms. Yes, I've noticed that. I'll take the keys, Miss Roberts. No, Mrs. Endicott. I've always had charge of them. But we shan't need you any longer. That is not for you to say. The will has taken care of that. Miserable old hag. I'd like to wring her neck. You've made an enemy of her. Are you afraid of her? Yes, I'm afraid of everything. So would you be if you had done it. If I had done what? Kill that old woman. You mean to say you killed her? You know you put me up to it. I... Yes, that's the kind of sneak you are. You always put me up to everything, making sure you won't be blamed. I can't stand the strain any longer. That old woman, I see her face everywhere, day and night. And the detective, he knows. I'll go to the police and confess. Do it, and hang. Well, the old woman's gone, poor soul. Too bad. You know, you look kind of pretty when you're sad, and that makes me feel good. We'll have to go to lots of funerals together. No, thanks. I don't like funerals. Oh, funerals are nothing to me. You know, I went to a wake the other night, and I had a pretty good time. You would. He's in there, Mrs. Bendigan. Might I see him alone? Why, certainly. There are no other prisoners here now. And a thousand thanks. It's a pleasure. Don't get within reach of him. I won't. And if I need any help, I'll call you. Philip. What do you want? It's your cousin Laura, Philip. I don't like cousins. I know. It's your cousin Herbert who has all your money now. Robbie says it's all mine. I'm sorry for you, Philip. Are you? I like you, Philip. I like you. I like looking at you. Wouldn't you like to come real near me? To hold me in your arms? <laughs> yes, yes. Then maybe if you could get rid of Herbert, you and I could live in the house together. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes, yes. But you see, Philip, while you're in there and I'm out here, these bars are between us. 
Why don't you get out then? I will. I will. Shh. They'll hear you. Everything all right, Mrs. Endicott? Yes, everything's all right. You know, Philip, he stole me from you, too. I'd be yours if it wasn't for him. That's right, you would. Are you very strong, Philip? Yes, I can break things. Then tonight, when they are not watching you, think about me and how your cousin Herbert stole me from you. Will you? Yes, yes. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'm going now. Wait. Wait. Let me kiss you. Just on the hand, then. <laughs> No, Mrs. Endicott. A sergeant is one rank lower than a lieutenant. Why, how did that happen? I do hope it wasn't over that unfortunate affair at my house. That's just what it was. Are you surprised? Dreadfully. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll go and see the chief of police myself and ask him as a special favor to me to reinstate you. Well, don't bother. Oh, really, it's no bother. Well, don't bother is not exactly what I meant. I should have said, I'd rather you didn't. I'd like to know you better. I think you're a very interesting man. I'm going to know you better. I think you're a very fascinating woman. Fascinating? Yes, I've made quite a study of faces. And you have a look in your eyes that is characteristic of two types. Indeed. What are they? Inspired geniuses and killers. Bontown department store. Oh, driver. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. I've changed my mind. 32 Mineta Lane. Yes, ma'am. I can't bear to have you feeling so dreadfully, darling. Tell me, what's wrong? Tom. It's Herbert. Money hasn't changed him a bit. He treats me brutally. If only you'd married me. Oh, Tom, you're sweet. Oh, Laura. And to think he stands between us. If only he were dead. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean it. I didn't. You did mean it, Laura. Your secret thoughts slipped out. Thoughts you never knew you had. You're the only person who understands me. That's because I love you. What? My darling. Tom, there's something I wouldn't tell anyone but you. What is it? He struck me. Someone ought to kill him. Police station. Just a moment, please. On the wire, Sergeant. Hello? Oh, yes, Mrs. Endicott. We have men patrolling the grounds. Certainly, Mrs. Endicott. What does she want? 
Wants us to send a man over. She's worried about that escaped lunatic. Oh, she is, eh? Hey, I'd like a chance to get back in that house. Go ahead. Okay. We've got men watching the grounds. What more can we do? My husband means so much to me. If anything should happen to Where me... Where is he? In his room. Oh, Herbert! You remember Sergeant Valcour, Herbert? He's come here to protect us. I don't need the police. Nevertheless, I'll take precautions, just to make your wife feel at ease. Thanks. I have some letters to write. You'll excuse me. I'll look around the house. Wait. I'll go with you. It's awfully nice of you to take such pains just to make me feel easier, Mr. Valcour. Well, that's my job. You build a wall around yourself. And I'm so anxious to break down that wall and really meet you face to face. Won't you let me? By that you mean I should stop being an officer and be just a man. <laughs> you veil your feelings delightfully. Now, why can't we two be friends? Real close friends. Cassidy! on the station. Have them send up two more men and a medical examiner. Right away. Yes, sir. Finger marks on his throat. Mrs. Endicott, your husband has been strangled. My poor husband lying there, strangled by that half-wit Philip. It wasn't Philip. Oh, I suppose you're going to bring up that nonsense again about why his neck wasn't broken. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's a good thing I was with you all the time, or you'd say I did it. It's a poor murderer that has to be present when the crime is committed. You hear that? He and I were here together and saw my poor husband alive. Then we went walking round the ground. And when we came back, he was dead. What do you call that? It's a... a... Alibi is the word you're looking for. Yes, that's the word. I thought possibly you'd never heard it. That's why I reminded you of it. Thanks. Not at all. What do you... I've encountered a lot of alibis. But this is the first time I've ever been.
I'm the medical examiner. Oh, yes, sir. Upstairs, sir. I'll bet it was one of them ice murders. Ice murder? What's that? Well, I read of such a case once in a mystery magazine. The victim bent over to tie his shoelace. The murderer sprayed him with liquid ice and he froze to death. And there he was, all rolled up like a whoop, and they had to bury him in a bass drum. This is no mystery case. We're up against a murderer whose mind works like a clock. Every step was planned to the minute. Murder by the clock. What did they be doing next? Oh, hello, Doctor. How are you, Sergeant? Well, what is it? Strangling. Man can't even finish his dinner anymore. Greatest ball game today you ever saw. In the second half of the night. Gary got back. Lefty Grove pitching. And the count was two and three. And... Well, what's the matter, Doc? What is it? Give me a hand here. Get him up on that bed. Call a nurse. Get a nurse. I'll go. He isn't dead? I'm not sure. There's just a chance of reviving him. What? Well, I'm going to try. Adrenaline does it sometimes. But he's so far gone that I'll have to inject it right into his heart muscles. You mean to say you can bring him back? Sure, if you bring him back to life, he'll be able to tell us who killed him. Hold your light for him, Cassidy. Yes, sir. I did it. I did it for you, Laura. You did? You killed my husband? Yes. Oh, how terrible. But you knew I was going to. You told me to. I told you to. I may have been upset, but I never really wished him dead. What? Oh, it's dreadful. Her, the dead. And you, his murderer. Oh. Oh, but Laura, what, what shall I do? You must get away. They mustn't find you here. Yes, but the place is surrounded. I'll show you. Through the passageway. and get away. Mm. No, no, don't stop to kiss me. Laura, don't you love me anymore? Well, how can you expect me to? Oh, what's to become of me? I'll give myself up. No, you mustn't do that. But if you don't love me, what oh, left? I didn't say I don't love you. Oh. Hurry. Well, is it working? Wait. I'm not sure. There. His pulse is going again. He's alive. <coughs> oh, 
Wait a minute. What's the matter, Mrs. Endicott? I'm all right. I'm all right. I thought he was dead. It's just a shock. Shock? Aren't you glad he's alive? Let me alone! Let me alone! Don't ask me anything! Oh, yes, I will, and you'll answer, too. What did you have to do with his death? Stop him! Stop him! Let her alone! Don't you see the strain she's under? Just let me ask her one question. No, you can question her later. Now, let's get into her room. Get a maid or someone to stay with her. I'll give her something to steady her nerves. It'll take plenty. Drink this. It'll make you sleep. Sleep? It... <gasps> Look! There's blood on the carpet! Why, there's no blood there. It's just your nerves. You'll feel better in the morning. Sleep. If I could only sleep. His wife. Upstairs with the others. Evil people. He's dead. And they want to make him live again. No, no. He should be dead. Sergeant, there's something I must impress upon you. Yes? His mind will begin working at exactly the point where it left off. That point was one of great shock and terror. And we must see that he comes safely through. I should like some close friend of his to be nearby when he awakens. Can't be his wife. I put her to sleep. Plain, sir. There's Mr. Hollander. Is he a close friend? Oh, yes, sir. A boss, Mr. and Mrs. Indicus. We'll get him here. Do you know his telephone number? Sure, it's in Mrs. Indicus' telephone book. All right, come on. And as you're his best friend, Mr. Holland, I thought you ought to be here. Will you? Why, uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to. Uh... You mean to say you won't? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, I'll come. Cassidy, did you ever have a hunch? I certainly did. I was going to get married once, and something told me not to. It was the girl's husband. I can't understand why Endicott's best friend should hesitate about coming here at a time like this. I'm going to find out about this, Hollander. I'm going to his house. Here, here's the phone number and his address. Now, you stay right here by this phone in case I call you. Yes, sir. What's your name? Jerry Smith. Since when? Why? What do you mean, sir? That wasn't your name six months ago, when I saw you in the lineup at headquarters. What are you doing here? I'm Mr. Hollander's valet. You know anything about him? Straightest, squarest gentleman you ever saw, sir. He gave me a chance. The only one who ever did. 
And if you mean him any harm, that'll do for you. This is odd. What talk? How long has Holland been in love with Endicott's wife? I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Look at this. And that one. And that. All of them. All of her. What was in this? An old Turkish knife. Where is it now? Why, I don't know. Where's the telephone? In the other room. Hello? Yes, sir. This is Cassidy. Now you listen to me. This is what I want you to do. Go upstairs. This is Mr. Hollander, who is to wait here with you. How do you do, Mr. Hollander? We've been expecting you. Do you really think he'll come to? It's an even chance. Well, will he be himself? That is, will he recognize people? Will he remember and all that? He'll be a little hazy at first, but that will pass in a moment. There. I think you're just in time. I'm sure I saw him move a little. Did he? Yes, his pulse is quite active. I think I'd better go call the doctor. Will you stay here? Yes. Herbert. Tom Hollander. You're not my friend. I'll turn you over to the police. No, you won't. I... I will. You and, and that wife of mine. I know. You know too much. He tried to stab him. His pulse is still active. Wait a minute.
What is that? Who tried to kill you? It was... If you don't stop that, I shall go mad. Oh, then you're not asleep. No. Would you mind giving me a cigarette? Light it for me, please. Thanks. Not at all. You uh, feel better after your sleep? Mm, much better, thank you. I, uh... I found this walking stick on the balcony. You shouldn't have. Probably not. It won't help me any. Uh, will anything? No. Mrs. Endicott, I'll admit, I'm completely stumped. Oh. Whoever did all this must be a very far-seeing person. I'm only hoping that they've slipped up on some trifle. Oh, I'm afraid you're hoping in vain. Yes, I'm afraid I am. But the trail has been covered pretty thoroughly. You know, I once made a suggestion to you, but you didn't take it. Yes? What was that? That we become friends. Good friend. I could be awfully fond of you. Thanks. But I'm in love. Uh, with my work. How did you get into that nightgown? You couldn't expect me to sleep in what I had on. Did you drink that sleeping draft? <laughs> what else could I do with it? I don't know. You might have thrown it out. Right there. Why did you do that? I'm going to have it analyzed. Then they'll know you've been here. You must go quickly. Yeah, but where shall I go? Go down and hide in the secret passage. 
I'll join you there. Yeah, but I'm afraid to go there. Oh, don't let your nerves get the better of you. Do as I say. All right. Let me have just one kiss before I go. I did everything for you. I know nothing about what you did. Oh, yes, you do. He got rid of the old woman for you. And then you had me kill him to get the money. And now you'd like to get rid of me. Oh, don't stand there and argue. Get out, get out. No. Help. Help me. Eh? There's just the two of us here, and I've found you out. Let me go. I've loved you too much to let you go. I don't love you. I love Philip. Philip? Philip, Philip! I could not hold you, nor could the two. Cold as ice. It's old Mrs. Endicott. What's this? It looks like a bit of plaster. It is plaster. Plaster Paris. I got the whole thing now. We're not dealing with ghosts. Search this passageway and bring me anything you find. Yes, sir. You must get away. They're looking for you. Do you want them to catch you? Let them. I want you. We'll meet somewhere after you've gotten away safely. No, I did everything you said. I won't go away from you. Help! Help! That's upstairs. Cassie, come on. time the neck is broken. Philip did this. But where is he? <laughs> Mine. Mine. <laughs>
You certainly like to keep your eye on me. I have to. You're under suspicion. Oh, and what a shame I'm going away. You see, I couldn't possibly stay in this house after all that's happened here. Mrs. Endicott, I once said you're either a genius or a killer. I find you're both. Thanks. I can't prove anything. But I wish you'd answer a few questions. Just as one artist to another. I can't resist that. What would you like to know? You're the cause of these three deaths. One murder led to another. That was your way of hiding evidence. Tell me, who's your next victim? You, perhaps. You're the only man who's ever set himself against me. And I love you for it. And you love me. Cassidy. Yes, sir? Let me have that mask. Yes, sir. It was you at the window, wearing this. It was you who frightened your husband to death. That's why the body was taken away, to make this. And then you didn't have time to put the body back. You've such a wonderful imagination, why not say it was Miss Roberts? You could easily convict her. She's always saying, let the dead stay dead. No, Mrs. Handicott. I'm going to convict you. The trifle I'd hoped for and you hadn't counted on has happened. Indeed. When you helped Hollander make this mask, it must have been Hollander. He's a sculptor. Yes. You were in such a hurry to have it finished that you picked it up before it was quite dry. Perhaps it looked moist as if fresh from the grave. Why not add that? So moist that you left your fingerprints on it. Cassidy, take this to headquarters. Yes, sir. You won't arrest me. You won't. No? No. Because in spite of yourself, you love me. We love each other. Because I'm a woman and you want me to hold in your arms. Oh, you won't arrest me. Why, you're the only man I've ever loved. Yes, it's true. Oh, it would be dreadful to be punished by you. You and I. We'll go away together. We will. Won't we? Yes. We'll go away together. To the police station.